Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome to Pearls of Eden. I am Marilyn Acosta, and today I want to talk to you about the Bible Challenge. So we are going to get started. Let's go. Okay, so the number 33. I've got my phone out, guys, so that I could just give you just some understanding of my research of what I found the number 33 to mean it is very prophetic and apparently the number 33 um, it means it means mastery to master something and we know that in the Bible that it always teaches us to constantly grow in the knowledge of the scriptures that we are students that we are to be uh, that we are to study the word to show ourselves approved and so when I saw the number 33 meant mastery I thought wow that is powerful because it's so important that we are growing constantly in the Word of God the Bible teaches us that we should aim not to stay on milk we shouldn't be believers who are still on milk but we should be wanting to grow in the solid things of God you know and we should be on meat and some of sometimes people get stuck because they get complacent and they stop growing and it's really important as disciples of Christ that we're teachable and we're always seeking to learn so when I saw that the 33 represents mastery I thought wow this is powerful and this is what it says in Corinthian it says in the parable there are two layers of meaning milk for children and solid food for adults meaning milk is diluted reading for children's minds and solid food is the true message assess accessibly only to mature minds and we both read the Bible day and night but you read black where I read white so it's like your mind is being renewed constantly to receive the revelations of Christ that's why I say two people can read the same scripture and get something completely different out of it yes they can get the same I guess um, basic meaning from that scripture but there's a deeper revelation behind it that only the mind of Christ can give you that's why we have to seek to have the mind of Christ so that we can understand those revelations because Jesus even said you know to the disciples when they said why do you speak parables and and, and make these stories such a, a mystery a riddle and he said because the deeper things basically you all are for those who want to seek it out those who study to show them themselves are approved to is a separation between the wheat and the tares those who are really seeking after the things of God and those who are just surface Christians lukewarm they are not really sold out for Christ right and so there's always a dividing line and so Jesus teaches the disciples that these things are for people who really want to understand and grow in the revelation and knowledge and wisdom of Christ Jesus it's not for everybody because not everybody's going to put the effort and not everybody thirsts and hunger for righteousness they just want it given to them remember the Bible teaches us that we must thirst and hunger that means we're seeking out God you know with all our hearts with all our minds and you know let's face it not everybody is doing that our desires to do that there are the children of God and then there are the others right and you know that's not to look down on anybody but that is the truth okay and the Bible says that it is to a king's glory to hide and it is up to a um, to one to to seek it out it's up to a king I can't think of it it's, it's the glory to conceal a matter for a king and it's up to a king to seek it out so we have to be constantly seeking and desiring to grow in the knowledge of Christ and like I said you know that that's the dividing line because we have a lot of people that are lukewarm in their walk they want to have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom and it's just not possibly to, it's not possible to grow in the way that God intends for you to grow in that way because he despises lukewarm in fact in revelations he says I will spit out the lukewarm right because you're neither cold nor hot for anything right okay so let's keep going so the number 33 what does it mean um, it says that Jesus was cru crucified at age 33. Although there is no historical clue to this, nothing is said about Jesus' childhood and youth, nor is it coincidental that Joseph was supposed to be 33 years old when he married the Virgin Mary. And I think that's really interesting. 
Also, Jesus performed 33 miracles. Um, God's name was mentioned in Genesis 33 times. Isn't that powerful, you all? It says that the Bible states that King David reigned in Jerusalem for 33 years and that Jesus was 33 years old when he died on the cross. Um, so we just see that the number 33 represents so much. I also have a book that talks about biblical numbers. And guys, you have to be very careful with this because they have angel numbers. They have numerology and all of those things. And that is not of God. Those things are perverted. So you have to really always go back to the word of God and seek it. Because whatever God has, there's a counterfeit that the enemy will do to just, you know, uh, get people, God's people trapped into perversion. And so when I'm talking about biblical numbers and their meaning, this is coming from the scriptural reference, not, you know, astrology and all of that stuff because we are to not take part of that, okay? So I want to make sure that I'm very clear because I know that I have people watching me who have all kinds of, you know, backgrounds and understandings and I just want to be clear, okay? So when we talk about the number 33, Abraham, Abraham and the promises of God, the number 33 represents promises. And I thought, wow, that is so beautiful that Abraham, even when he, um, I think the Bible says he was 99 when he was promised that he would have a baby or he had Isaac. And we know that that is, you know, when you divide it up into threes, right? Three, three. So I don't know. There's just so many mysteries, guys. There's so much to understand. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything. God is teaching and revealing me day by day you know what it is that he seeks for me to understand about this whole thing right but i just thought it was just so intriguing to know the meaning just some of the meaning behind the number 33. um he's also been showing me the number one one which from my understanding through my research it means I connected to Hebrews 11 and we know that that is the book of faith, right? And when we see 111, a lot of times God is increasing our faith. He wants to increase our faith for the next level, whatever it is that he's trying, where he's trying to take us and what he's trying to show us. So when I found that out, I thought, wow, that is pretty amazing because we grow from faith to faith and glory to glory. Hallelujah. So these are just some of the things, um, you know, God... God is so good, you all. Like I said, if someone would have told me that I would have been able to read the Bible, the entire Bible, under 40 days, I would have said that that is not possible. But it's just amazing when we step out of on a faith and we don't rely on our own strength, but we understand that our weaknesses are made perfect in His strength. He helps us to do the impossible. And you know what's so sad is we have so many believers that say they believe the word of God. They want to walk in the supernatural, but then they don't allow themselves to be used as vessels to prove those things, right? And so you cannot receive what you don't have faith to believe in. So that's just powerful for us to understand. We have to believe. We have to walk in faith because Abraham, the Bible tells us that his belief, his it was accounted to him for righteousness, right? Just believing, having faith in God that he could do what he says he's going to do. And as I read each day and I, I committed myself to reading a book or more of the Bible, there were so many things that stood out. There were so many things that the Lord just opened my eyes that I had seen before but never registered in my spirit. And I wasn't even doing a deep study. It was just literally you all, I would read and just absorb it in faith. And um, a lot of times I wanted to stop and I wanted to go look something up, but then the Lord would say, no, this is not the time. I'm, I'm teaching you, I'm just, just read, just read and absorb the word. And I did. And I just learned so much. And I'm still learning. I'm still thinking over the experience. There are so many things that, that um, he just showed me. And it's just our obedience is so critical, you all. When God tells you to do something, just step out in faith. Don't think about your schedule. Don't think about how you're going to do it. Just do it. You know, where there is a will, there is a way. And sometimes we limit ourselves because we get stuck on, we look at, oh, I don't have time. How am I going to get this in? Just step out there and do it. All right, guys. All right, guys. I came inside because it is hot out there. <laughs> 
but again okay so let's get back into the number 33 so the number 33 it is considered to be a sign of God's promise in the Bible. Um, for example, when Noah is repeated on the 33rd time in the Bible, that God gives him a promise not to destroy the world with the flood ever again. This statement of this promise was approved by the rainbow. And guys, who knows? I love the rainbow so much. And so when I saw this, I thought confirmation, right? That number 33 represents not only the promise that Noah was that was given but the rainbow that he would never flood the, the world again and also the prophecy is a form of God's promise and one of the most important prophecies was about the sacrifice of God's only son for the sake of humanity when he was 33 years old we know that Jesus died and was crucified and also 33 is the numerical association to the star of David which is used nowadays on the flag for Israeli people so I just thought that that was amazing not only does the number 33 represent the promise the promise that was given to Abraham that he would be a father of many nations also his son Isaac the number 33 represents Jesus being crucified it represents Noah and the rainbow and the promise that God gave Noah that he would not flood the the earth again and so the number 33 also represents the promise and so I just, you know, God has made so many promises to me personally. He's shown me in his word things that I know that he has done and will do and is doing in the process. And so for me, it was a beautiful confirmation. Um, also, the number 33 means mastery. And we talked about that earlier. So it's just a culmination and a confirmation of all the things that the Lord has been showing me that he is doing in my life personally in this hour, you all. God wants to do so much in our lives but we have to be open we have to be willing to receive the word of God and we always have to be students ready to learn with a teachable spirit open to the truth open to hearing what the Lord has to teach us um, so yeah I just you know the Bible challenge was such a beautiful experience this is why guys we are growing faith to faith, glory to glory. You will never be finished with the Bible. I always tell people it is not like you read the Bible, you put it down. Oh, I've accomplished my goal. That's wonderful if you've read the Bible once, but we should be reading and in the word every day. You could be 199 and you will still be pulling new revelations because God has to give you eyes to see. He has to give you ears to hear. He knows when you're ready to receive a particular word and the Bible is a living book it is the word okay it is Jesus Christ so we have to remember that it's not just any book but this is the book that we live by okay it is the Alpha it is the Omega it is the Word of God it starts with the Word of God and it ends with the Word of God hallelujah because it says heaven and earth will pass away but my word will remain forever powerful right powerful to understand i hope that you all are having a beautiful beautiful saturday in the lord resting it's really important that we take care of ourselves self-care is important that we get the proper rest we need that we're not going 100 miles per hour every day but that we learn to be still so that we can give our best through the week so it's really important that we do take that sabbath rest whether you do it today or tomorrow but you make sure that you spend time to give your spirit a chance to just be still all right guys um i'm trying to think if there's anything else that i want to share with you all um just know that through god through christ all things are possible he is he is able to break off all the chains off of your life he is able to keep you from going through the cycles the constant battles the constant cycles of just keep doing the same thing over and over and never growing and never learning he can break it off of your life and we know that you know the devil if you don't learn from your mistakes he does <laughs> so it's just really critical that you are constantly allowing the Lord to cleanse your heart your mind and your spirit and renew you so that you can walk in a way that's pleasing to him and that you don't keep you don't keep making the same mistakes but you learn and you grow and you get better all right guys I love you y'all have a blessed day remember you are the head not the tail you are above only and never beneath bye guys talk to you soon